We came into this week up four, four and a half percent from uh, 2022. So we're not overboard, which is a little bit overextended. And that's why you see right now, a lot of stocks kind of resting. They're catching up, they're catching their breath. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is having a great day. Hope everybody had a great uh, long weekend. Again, happy belated uh, Father's Day to all uh, who celebrate uh, the wonderful uh, job of being uh, a parent. So let's talk about the market. Um, look at the indexes today, right? Uh, you had the Dow down 245 points, you had the S&P down 21, and you had the NASDAQ down 22 points. And when I tell you nobody cares, nobody cares. Uh, at one point, the bulls actually just started kind of like, they they, they, they didn't want to show any interest today. And, and the first, you know, three, four hours of the day, everything was just kind of like, just drifting lower, drifting lower. At one point, the NASDAQ 100 uh, actually lost the five-day moving average. That's how it was obviously a really kind of a big deal. And it didn't look like the bulls just wanted it to, to put up any type of fight today. And then lo and behold, um, right after lunch, things started firming up. The Qs reclaimed the five-day moving average. And the reason why that was such a big deal, uh, we haven't closed below the five-day moving average since... Uh, all the way back to May 23rd. So you're talking about almost a month that if we were to close below the five day, it would have, you know, shorted, well, excuse me, it would have Freudian slip. It would have provided at least a short-term sell signal. Whoever has control of the five day usually has control of short-term sentiment. Uh, but to, to give the bulls uh, kudos once again, uh, they reclaim back the five day moving average. And not only did they reclaim back the five day moving average, the usual suspects just kept on going, right? Tesla got stronger. It's trading up another uh, three points after hours. NVIDIA, again, looked like it, it tested the five-day moving average, woke up today in the afternoon. Just look at this move just from lunch, right? This is a move strictly from lunch. It got back above this 432 level right before I left. I, you, I, I took a half day today. It was, today was my, my daughter's birthday. It, it reclaimed back the sneaky pivot of 432.30s put up a $6 bar into the close. But the most interesting part about today's session was not the beta names. The majority of beta names were, you know, kind of weak the whole day. Uh, you had Microsoft, you know, you kind of go through the whole thing. Microsoft, Red, Google, Apple, uh, Roku, Intel, AMD, all Red. Um, Meta had a very strong session today. Uh, and again, another perfect example, holding the five-day moving average, defending it, running back up. But it was the smaller names that made kind of an impact today. And it wasn't, when I mean smaller names, I don't mean $2 stocks, but names like Mara, right? If you look at Mara, and I'm sure a lot of you guys who trade in this price range probably noticed the stock putting in a base for probably about a month and a half, two months. It's been in a long, long base. This morning, you know, it's starting to perk up a little bit, didn't quite get to this breakout channel. And then finally, towards the afternoon, it got really, really aggressive, finally getting above uh, this 1070s highs and closed right at the top of the channel here. If you, this is the, literally the highest close in this whole formation, including the highs uh, from April. So keep an eye on Mara for tomorrow. Names like Riot, right? Names like a Riot that, again, maybe some of you guys don't trade, but this is, again, one of those Bitcoin adjacent, right, type of friends. Uh, Mara exploded. You know, look, look at Riot, right? One day, it's one day away from reclaiming the 50-day moving average. You guys know what happens. Look at the last time here when Riot, right? The last time it reclaimed the 50-day moving average was on January, February, March the 13th. And from March the 13th, all the stock did was go from uh, 635 all the way up to, four, uh, to 414.42. So we are right at the 50-day moving average. If Riot can reclaim the 50-day moving average, again, I'm not saying the stock gonna go, is gonna, is gonna uh, 3X, it within a month and a half, but this is a significant level. For all you guys who've been kind of watching this broadcast for years, you know the significance of who whoever has control of the 50-day moving average, well, probably has control of, of near-term, not only short-term, but near-term sentiment. Near-term sentiment could be 
uh, two, three months. So it's a very, very big watch for tomorrow, uh, especially if Mara continues to go. Keep an eye on Riot. If they can just get above this channel here, guys, this thing could really uh, wake up as well. Look at a name like Space, right? Space apparently, uh, from what I understand, they are uh, finally next week or this week are going to be doing their retail launch into space. I think it's like two, three, four hundred RAM, whatever it is. Well, the stock had a big move up on Friday. It faded and today it reclaimed the levels. They came for a short term 650s, 7s, and even 8s going to July and August. So definitely, definitely keep an eye on space, especially uh, if it starts taking out today's channel uh, tomorrow. A name, for example, like Rivian. Rivian, I've been, I've been long now for several days, uh, multiple entries, but uh, several days. You know, not again, not only are they coming, they're still coming for those 17 and a half uh, dollar calls. Nice five percent move today. If you get you guys remember Friday, it gave us initial move right into supply. If Rivian can reclaim the supply in the next couple of days and start building above this 1610 level, who the hell knows? Maybe Rivian finally wakes up. But the interesting part about Rivian, not only were they coming for the 1750s today, at towards the end of the day, I kind of do a, like a rough draft of um some some option uh, some option flow. Somebody bought the August 25s. What the hell are they betting about? But if somebody knows something, this guy's betting the 25s. Okay, can we at least get it above $16 first? That would be cool. The cool part about uh, also today's session was when you started seeing things faded, a lot of stocks started to look heavy. If you look at charts, for example, like an AMD, right? AMD got very lucky today that the 20-day demand was sitting there. Guys, keep an eye on this thing. Again, we always have to be prepared for both sides of the market. Let's watch AMD for the next couple of days because if there is a pull in the next couple of days and starts losing the bottom of range here, man, this thing could, could get hit. Keep an eye on this thing. Google, despite a lot of short-term 130 call buyers coming in, this is still holding on to the bottom of range. Again, another name uh, we should definitely keep an eye on just in case they pull whenever they do. Tomorrow, next day, three weeks from now, three lifetimes from now. But again, a lot of stocks, which is as good as some of these stocks have been holding up, there's so many names sitting there weird at the bottom of the range that just can't get off the mat. Again, just something to uh, it's just something to be uh, wary of. But but again, the name of the game is the bull market is still just absolutely rabid. Um, you know, Tesla continues just just to just to go nuts. I mean, every single day just go nuts. Nvidia, it's it's literally uh, it's literally a race now. Who gets you know who gets there first? Is it Tesla gets to 300 first? Or does uh, Nvidia get to 500 first? Again, we'll see. You know, we'll see what happens there. But the market continues to be good. The key, again, guys, the key, what I always say to everybody, don't get blinded by the lights. Don't just start uh, buying, you know, ridiculous stocks at different, you know, levels and hope for the best. Just wait for these areas of interest, especially with the option flow to kick in. Those are the names that are continuously being lit up. You, you know, you saw it today. Uh, you saw it today with, with many names, you know, with space. You saw it today with uh, Mara. Again, Mara, they were coming for near term 11 and a half, 12, 12, 1250 calls. Again, these things are being uh, lit up. So going into tomorrow, let me give you guys uh, some names that I, I am watching. Again, this uh, this uh, update's gonna be a little bit uh, a little bit uh, rushed just because I have to still shower after we have dinner tonight with my with my daughter. Uh, she turned 14. It's amazing. I just remember my son being born at 16 years old. Now my daughter's 14. Getting old sucks, but it is what it is, and it's part of life. So let's talk about this. Uh, obviously, Mara, uh, I, I really like Mara for a continuation play tomorrow. Uh, definitely keep an eye on it. Just in case they pull at the open, uh, this is definitely a candidate for a, uh, for a, a rising 60-minute trap and go red to green. But if not, uh, we're watching for opening ranges. Uh, space, uh, I definitely want to watch space. Same notes as Mara. If it opens up lower, let's watch for the dip into rising 60-minute support or getting above uh, today's channels. Uh, on the short side, right? Look at look at Roku, right? Roku first closed today below the 10-day moving average. If there is weakness in the market, let's keep an eye on this thing for a potential uh, for a potential move back uh, down. And Zoom, you know, Zoom is not usually a name I would look at anymore after the pandemic and the liquidity in this name really died down but they were coming for some 72 calls today held up fairly well uh let's keep an eye on this thing if this thing can reclaim uh the 150 day supply maybe this thing wakes up as well so d definitely a name uh to watch other names you know they're we're, we're kind of all in the middle of the ranges uh amazon not really here or there 
Uh, Apple, you know, Apple is just resting. A good, good deserved rest, but it's holding on to the five-day moving average. Uh, you got Meta, Nvidia, Tesla, obviously leading the way, and everything is kind of just in, in, in wait and see mode. And that's the most important part. Uh, when I start seeing, you know, people ask me all the time, well, well isn't the kind of the quote unquote the market top uh, when the smaller, crappier starts start waking up? Not necessarily. Again, not necessarily. Again, like I said in the weekend update, we might be a little bit extended. But we're never, we're not even close to overbought. We're not even close. Again, we're, we came into this week up 4, 4.5% from uh, 2022. So we're not overboard, which is a little bit overextended. And that's why you see right now a lot of stocks kind of resting. They're catching up. They're catching their breath. They're getting their feet wet, uh, set under them because if they can't sell the market off in the next several days, then, well, yeah, we're going to have another uh, session up because rest always, you know, once a stock rests, and starts building in a three, four, five day range. When it gets above the range, and hopefully uh, option flow, you know, precedes it, uh, you could get a, a next uh, measured potential move. So sometimes, again, uh, you have to kind of figure out price action. Sometimes price action uh, kind of just sits there and tells you exactly what it wants to do. Uh, the key for me is always watching stocks getting uh, beneath, you know, coming out of bases. And again, th th that's why I really like this matter, right? You saw I just came out of the bottom of the range here. This is a two-month consolidation. And the same thing with Riot, right? It's coming off the bottom. Again, all the trades that I'm putting on, for the exception of beta names, whether it's bounces or, uh, you know, intermediate channel ranges, uh, everything I'm, I'm trying to buy right now is at the bottom range. So example, if Riot fails tomorrow at the 50-day moving average, you're losing pennies. If NVIDIA fails tomorrow into strength, you can be losing dollars. It's a very, very big difference between a uh, continuation pattern that you see in, in, in uh, NVIDIA and Tesla and uh, a range breakout finally multi-week, multi-month. And that's the safest place to always uh, garner an entry. Guys, God bless. I will see you guys uh, tomorrow. Have an awesome, wonderful evening. Uh, and with God's help, I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Take care.